In this video, we will discuss the pathology of atherosclerosis in details. Firstly, we will see its definition and pathogenesis. Then we will learn its morphology in details. And at last, we will see clinico-pathological consequences of atherosclerosis in details. So first of all, let's come to the definition of atherosclerosis. So atherosclerosis is the deposition of fibro fatty material in tunica intima of large to medium sized vessels. The first keyword here is fibro fatty material. This implies that atherosclerotic plaques are composed of fibrous tissue and fatty tissue. We will discuss it in more details in the morphology section of this video. The second keyword is tunica intima of the vessels. You know that blood vessels are made up of three layers. The innermost layer is tunica intima, the middle layer is tunica media and the outermost layer is tunica adventitia. So out of all these layers, atherosclerosis specifically affect the tunica intima of the vessels. It does not affect tunica media and tunica adventitia. The third key point is large to medium sized vessels. Now large vessels means aorta and medium sized vessels means arteries supplying the organs such as coronary arteries, popliteal arteries and carotid arteries. So the point is that atherosclerosis affects only large to medium sized vessels. It does not affect small sized vessels that are arterioles. So let's compile the definition again. Atherosclerosis is the deposition of fibro fatty material in tunica intima of large to medium sized vessels. Now let's come to the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. So basically this disease starts when some risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia and smoking causes injury to endothelial cells. This endothelial injury results in endothelial dysfunction which means that abnormality in function of endothelial cells. So we can say that endothelial dysfunction is the precursor of the process of atherosclerosis. It is the first process in the formation of atherosclerotic plaques. Now once the endothelial dysfunction occurs, it is manifested in form of upregulation of adhesins molecules on the surface of endothelial cells. These adhesin molecules act as receptors and cause migration of monocytes, lymphocytes and platelets from blood vessel lumen inside the tunica intima. So monocytes, lymphocytes and platelets migrate into the, tun into the tunica intima. This process is called as inflammation. So you can say that in this process, endothelial dysfunction causes the inflammation of vessel wall. Now in the next step, when the inflammatory cells have entered in into the tunica intima, they release reactive oxygen species that cause oxidation of LDL into oxidized LDL. Now in the next step, macrophages cause ingestion of these oxidized LDL inside them and this results in deposition of lipid inside the macrophages. This lipid appears as vacuoles. Such macrophages are called foam cells. So foam cells are a manifestation of intracellular lipid in macrophages. Now as the lipid scheme on, keeps on accumulating in the macrophages, some of the macrophages die. And when macrophages die, the cholesterol deposited inside them re gets released into the extracellular matrix. So it results in cholesterol crystals which are manifestation of extracellular lipid. So there is intracellular lipid accumulation as well as extracellular lipid accumulation. So up till now fats have been accumulated inside the vessel wall in the tunica intima. Now this continuous lipid accumulation in the tunica intima causes activation of macrophages and lymphocytes. This act activation of macrophages and lymphocytes causes release of cytokines and chem chemokines from macrophages and lymphocytes which causes migration of smooth muscle cells into the tunica intima. You know that smooth muscle cells are present in the tunica media but in case of, but in case of atherosclerosis due to release of cytokines smooth muscle cells migrate from tunica media and enter in the, into the tunica intima. Now you know that normal smooth muscle cells are contractile in functions. But the smooth muscle cells that are formed in atherosclerosis in the tunica intima, they, they are of altered phenotype and instead of contraction, their function is to make collagen fibers. So in the last process, the smooth muscle cells start making collagen fibers, which results in formation of a fibrous cap on the atherosclerotic plaque. So the end result of this is atherosclerotic plaque formation, the core of which is composed of lipids and inflammatory cells and the fibrous cap covering it is composed of smooth muscle cells and collagen fibers. So let's revise the pathogenesis once again. In atherosclerosis, some factors such as hemodynamic disturbances and hyperlipidemia or smoking causes endothelial dysfunction. This endothelial dysfunction causes migration of 
leukocytes in the tunica intima which is called inflammation this inflammation causes oxidation of ldl into oxidized ldl then macrophages ingest this oxidized ldl and become foam cells and some of the foam cells die and the lipid inside the foam cell is released in form of cholesterol crystals now this continuous lipid accumulation in leukocytes causes release of cytokines which causes migration of smooth muscle cells from tunica media into tunica intima and these smooth muscle cells in tunica intima make collagen fibers which result in formation of superficial fibrous cap which are a feature of atherosclerotic plaque so atherosclerotic plaques are composed of core of lipid and inflammatory cells covered by fibrous cap make, made of smooth muscle cells and collagen now we will study the pathological features of atherosclerosis first of all we will see the pathological features of fatty streaks which are the precursor lesions of atherosclerosis so on gross specimen of a vessel fatty streaks are visible as yellow flat macules the word macules means that such lesions do not project into the lumen of vessel and do not cause stenosis for microscopic features the keyword to focus in fatty streaks is fatty the word fatty means that there is inclusion of fat particles and as you know that fat does not get stained on microscopic slide so instead of fat you see empty vacuoles in cytoplasm of macrophages as you can see here in this diagram now let's come to the gross features of atherosclerotic plaque on gross specimen of a diseased vessel atherosclerosis is present as white to yellow colored raised lesion and on cut section of a vessel the plaque is visible as eccentric or focal lesion the word eccentric means that it does not affect the 360 degree of a vessel in a circular way rather it occupies a small part of circumference of the vessel as you can see here in this diagram now if we talk about the site of involvement of atherosclerotic plaques the infrarenal abdominal aorta is the most common one second to this is coronary arteries which are followed by popliteal arteries which are the arteries of leg and finally there are uh, the involvement is at internal carotid arteries so the order is infrarenal abdominal aorta coronary arteries popliteal arteries and carotid arteries now for microscopic features of atherosclerotic plaque the keywords to remember are fibro fatty deposition fibro fatty deposition the word fibro means that the atherosclerotic plaques are made of superficial fibrous caps and the word fatty denotes that deep to this superficial fibrous cap there is lipid rich necrotic core so superficially there is superficial fibrous cap and on deep side there is lipid rich necrotic core and the superficial fibrous caps are made up of smooth muscle cells which are of altered phenotype and secrete a dense network of collagen so superficial fibrous caps are made up of smooth muscles and dense collagen and as far as this lipid rich necrotic core is concerned the lipid is present extracellularly in the form of cholesterol clefts and intracellular as vacuoles in macrophages that are known as foam cells now along with these lipid this lipid rich necrotic core contain necrotic debris and few thrombi of platelets and fibrin so overall this necrotic core contains extracellular cholesterol in form of cholesterol crystals intracellular cholesterol in form of vacuoles in macrophages such macrophages are called foam cells this necrotic core contains necrotic material and it also contains few thrombi of platelets and fibrin now along with these features of atherosclerotic plaque two additional features are neovascularization which means formation of newly formed vessels or vasa vasorum at the corner of these plaques and the second feature is dystrophic calcification which means calcification of necrotic material so this is the diagram of atherosclerotic plaque here is a pet portion of tunica intima and here is a fibrous cap containing smooth muscles and dense collagen below the fibrous cap is the lipid necrotic core these are the cholesterol clefts these are the vacuolated macrophages and you can also find necrotic material in the core now we will move to the concept of stable and unstable atherosclerotic plaques after which we will learn their morphological features which are commonly asked in exams firstly you have to understand that whenever an atherosclerotic plaque gets ruptured ulcerated or undergoes hemorrhage through neovascularized area the necrotic material inside the plaque gets exposed and as platelets have a tendency to form clots at such damaged areas so these changes result in formation of thrombus that fully occlude the vessel such syndrome is known as acute coronary syndrome and it includes myocardial infarction and unstable angina 
Now an atherosclerotic plaque which is more likely to rupture, ulcerate and undergo hemorrhage is called vulnerable plaque or unstable plaque. And a plaque which, is, which has less chances to undergo these changes is known as stable plaque. Now let's come to the differences in morphological features of stable and vulnerable plaque. The keyword to focus in morphology of stable atherosclerotic plaque are A stable plaque is more fibrous and less fatty. The words of focus are more fibrous and less fatty. More fibrous means that it has thick superficial fibrous caps and is highly calcified due to dystrophic calcification. And the second keyword less fatty means that in the core of plaques, the quantity of intracellular and extracellular lipid is very less. Resultantly, necrotic material and inflammatory cells are also very less. Now in contrast, the keywords for morphology of vulnerable plaque or unstable plaque are A vulnerable plaque is less fibrous and more fatty. Less fibrous, more fatty. Less fibrous means that it has thin fibrous caps and less dystrophic calcification. That's why it is thin. More fatty means that it has abundant intracellular and extracellular lipid and resultantly there is high quantity of necrotic cores and inflammatory cells. So overall the point is that the stable plaques has thick fibrous caps and thin lipid cores containing less necrotic and inflammatory material while vulnerable plaques have thin fibrous cap and thick lipid cores with abundant necrotic and inflammatory matter. Now let's come to the clinical pathological consequences of atherosclerosis. The first consequence of atherosclerotic plaque is stenosis of vessels. Now this stenosis of vessels keeps on progressing and once it reaches a critical point, it results in ischemia of the affected organ. If this ischemia affects heart, it is called coronary artery disease. And if this ischemia affects peripheral arteries such as popliteal arteries and carotid arteries, it is called peripheral arterial disease. Now the second consequence of atherosclerotic plague is that the atherosclerotic plaques undergoes acute changes such as rupture, erosion or ulceration or hemorrhage. These changes result in exposure of necrotic core of the atherosclerotic plaque which causes the aggregation of platelets on the vessel wall. This results in formation of clot that is called thrombosis and it can cause sudden heart attack or sudden stroke. Now the third consequence of atherosclerotic plaque is that a part of atherosclerotic plaque can break off and embolize into the distal organs. For example, a plaque from carotid arteries can break off and can enter into the blood vessels of the brain resulting in stroke. Now what happens is that when atherosclerosis develops in the vessel wall, it acts as a mechanical barrier for the diffusion of oxygen and nutrients from the lumen of vessels into the walls of vessels. This causes ischemia to the tissue that is present in the walls of vessel, so it results in degeneration of musculoelastic tissue of vessels. This, de this degeneration of musculoelastic tissue in the vessels make the vessel wall fragile and due to this fragility, the blood vessels become dilated in the form of aneurysms. So overall, the clinical pathological consequences of atherosclerosis are stenosis, thrombosis, embolization and aneurysms.